It's that time again. Two minutes to review what's going on. I'm Matt. And I'm Zach. If you haven't joined us for one of these before, well, you're in for a treat. We got a really good one this time. You click the picture. It's Rob Zombie's brand new album. I know I'm going to screw the name up here. The Lunar Ejection Kool-Aid Eclipse. Yes, screwed it up. (laughs) The Lunar Injection Kool-Aid Eclipse Conspiracy. There we go. Yeah. It's and actually, uh, all things considered, it's not his craziest album title. Every uh, time I think about this album, I think of one of his earlier ones with a crazy title, Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor. Yeah, that one I can't I don't even try. That one just no, forget it. That's too many big words. This one, side note, it's a bit of a shame that they did not try to use the Kool-Aid man in any advertising and have a yeah oh, off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Missed opportunity, but I digress. Uh <laughs> Rob Zombie is one of those larger than life figures in the hard rock world, whether you have been following him since White Zombie or just his whole solo career or even just a fan of the movies that he's directed. He's usually been a reliable, maybe sometimes safe go to artist for shock rock and horror metal. And, you know, it's funny, Matt, I was actually thinking back and I think I'm not he isn't the artist I've seen the most live. But he's definitely maybe in the top five artists I've seen the most, weirdly yeah, that's enough. that's definitely not the case for me. I've seen him once. Only once? Only once. And I'm trying to even remember who I saw him with. It was a big tour. It was him co-headlining with somebody. Probably but I Korn? don't remember who. No, because I don't, I don't think it was Korn. Maybe. I don't know. But it was a while ago. It was from a time when you can sit next to somebody who you didn't know in a field and drink a beer and watch a live show. Uh, I know I know days. it was from the from the good old days. <laughs> the good old days, all one year ago. Um <laughs> but like it's he's one of those artists that I've seen with other artists. It just so happened he was on the bill. I've seen him a few times on his own. I've always thought he'd put on a hell of a show. And I always thought maybe, you know, live he was a little bit better than on record. Although once in a while, uh, he will come out and surprise me with a song. I mean, first off, John Five, his guitarist for well over 10 years, has really just helped Rob Zombie up his game live and also in the studio. And he's always had a great band. So He's an an awesome guy. Oh, John Five is just incredible. And not to, you know, maybe I'm getting a little too much into what my review might be, but... I think John Five has always been a shining moment in Rob Zombie's catalog. But you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. But you know what? Before we go into sharing our thoughts about Mr. Zombie's seventh solo offering, which, wow, I can't believe it's been seven solo albums already. I want to just take a moment to give a special shout out to Lucky 13 Beard Company. They produce made-to-order beard oils and balms right in our home state of New Jersey. And Matt and I just could not be more honored to be sponsored by them. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of places out there that, you know, sell beard oil and, you know, stuff for men's grooming. And one of the things that I always really didn't like about them is you always smell like the next person. Well, Zach and I had a chance to try them out. And let me tell you, these things smell fantastic. I got, uh, we actually both got the tobacco vanilla and it, that smells really good. My wife really enjoys the, uh, the sandalwood. And also, let me tell you that she's the first person to call me out if I'm spending my money on stupid shit. Um, <laughs> so when I said that, you know, we were doing this whole beard oil thing, she's like, does beard oil actually do anything for you? I'm like, yeah, it does. She's like, I don't believe it. I'm like, well, I've used it. She's like, well, I can't tell. Okay. Well, thanks for making me feel great for all these years. But um, no, I tried. And then we tried Lucky 13's products. And let me tell you, within a day or two of me trying it, she's like, okay, I guess you were right that it does actually work and it actually does smell good too. I'm like, great. I'm glad that you're on board with this because there's some really good products. They're made to order small batches. I can't tell you enough about these guys. They're super. If you have, if you haven't tried beard oil before and you've got facial hair, you really need to try this out. So make sure you go check them out. Yeah. I mean, even I, I mean, I never really took too good of care of my beard and now I wish I discovered, you know, this sooner. It really does make my beard better. And now it's even easier for you to try it out. Head over right now to etsy.com slash shop slash lucky 13 beard co and use the code EFP 10 and you will receive 10% off of your order. So guys, treat yourself to a better, more luxurious beard and ladies treat that special bearded someone 
in your life's a gift that you'll end up depreciating just as much as they will. I mean, as our wives can attest to. Yeah. Again, head over to Etsy.com slash shop slash lucky thirteen beard co right now and use the code EFP10 to receive a 10% off discount on your order. And you know who I bet top dollar uses beard oil as well? I know where you're going with this. Who do you think? Well, obviously, Rob Zombie. Yeah. I was just waiting <laughs> so I can do another yeah. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair warning, everyone. We're going to say yeah a lot in case you couldn't tell already. <laughs> Matt, I'm going to uh, request I go first. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to be a, a jerk. Swerve. I'm going to be a jerk. You know what? Fine. You can be that jerk. Thanks. All right there, tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. That w- that's more, that's too nasally. Yeah, it's like, I'd say it's you took, you took it too far there, Chief. No, no, I think I did it. I think, Rob, Rob Zombie, do you think I did good? Yeah, Zach. Thank you, Rob. He's in the studio, in case you guys couldn't tell. All right. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. So, Here's the truth. At this point, you know what you're going to get with a Rob Zombie album. Uh, even though this particular record definitely finds some experimenting a little bit more of groovy or funky or stuff that might remind you of some early White Zombie and maybe even the Education Horses album vibes, you know what you're going to get. And sometimes that's fine. And in fact, there's songs like Crow Killer Blues, who, which is such an awesome song that, frankly, all the, there's a little beef between... Ozzy and Rob Zombie for a little bit that Rob kept accusing uh, Ozzy of stealing his band members. You listen to the Crow Killer Blues, you can hear why he's nervous that John Five might chip over to the Ozzy bandwagon because he just kills it on this song. But song like that song, Get Loose, Howling Man, and King Freak, of course, those are shortened versions. I can't even start to begin the full titles. They're fun Rob Zombie songs that at first make me go, you know what? Sure, every it sounds like a zombie record, but what more do you want? It almost makes it an enjoyable record. But then there's a lot of flaws. First flaw is just the so many unnecessary interludes. I'm sorry, but not every song needs an interlude, especially if it doesn't actually help build anything. It's all just filler, and it just got really on my nerves. And then it was also kind of frustrating because the biggest dilemma I feel that Zombie has sometimes, at least with the later stuff, is... He doesn't know if he wants to sound like a futuristic, industrial, robotic version of Black Sabbath or a psychobilly punk album on acid. Uh, And there's some songs that literally sound like it's the soundtrack to a honky-tonk dive bar that's hosting a hoedown orchestrated by the Munsters on acid. Um, And what's that sounds kind of like, oh, it's interesting and uh, kind of goofy, but he's been trying to do that on so many songs for a while that it just doesn't really sound that great. It kind of sounds annoying. Again, there's moments where John five really steps up and makes it a little bit interesting, but it's just overall, while I know not to expect much from Rob Zombie, it's still a little disappointing because there's moments of just glimmers of hope that, Oh, maybe they're onto something and it just still somehow falls flat. And time. What is your star rating? I keep going between two and a half and three stars. I'm leaning towards two and a half. First off, Crow Killer Blues should not have been the final track on this album. I would even argue that should be a lead single. It's such a Black Sabbath slash Ozzy, early Ozzy inspired song that I think he did himself injustice by not releasing that sooner. So there's moments that I'm like, all right, this is kind of enjoyable. And I definitely went into this record with more hope because the last two albums were a little disappointing. But man, those interludes just really dragged the whole album out and just made it a chore to listen to. So I'm going with two and a half stars. Okay. As I know that sounds like a, a diss to this album, but literally, if it wasn't for those interludes, I could be convinced of a three and a, a three star review. So Matt, are you ready? Am I ready? I suppose I could be persuaded into being ready. Can I get a, yeah? If I do it, it's going to sound more like James Hetfield than Rob Zombie. Uh, I mean, does it? <laughs> do, so here's the key. Do a James Hetfield, yeah, but like unenthusiastic. Yeah. You, know, now, you see, yeah, <laughs> you, you accused me of being nasally. You got to be, uh, you know, we've already gone too far. Yeah, way too far. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. 
So let me start off by saying this. Even the titles of Rob Zombie's latest albums make me not want to talk about them because then I have to say this title and remember it over and over and over again. I mean, comparing this album to the to the last couple ones, The Electric Warlock, Acid, Witch, Satanic, Orgy, Celebration, Dispenser, and Venomous Rat, Regeneration, Vendor, the yeah, they make me not want to talk about them. But this album really does feel like to me that this is the most accessible Rob Zombie has been in a while. It's not saying a lot because well, like Zach did mention that the album does kind of fall flat in areas. What makes me like this album is it is kind of harkening back to those early Rob Zombie solo albums like you know, Billy Deluxe in there. And, you know, it just kind of feels like he's getting back into what made Rob Zombie enjoyable in the first place when he first went solo now a couple of other things that i really enjoyed about the album before i go into everything else i enjoyed that it encourages you to listen to it at a loud volume the production sounds great and to turn it up and hear all of the little nuances and details that are going on it makes it a really good loud listening album if you're looking for something like that songs like the triumph king of king freak the ballad of sleazy writer i love that one and then the groove and the feel on Boom, Boom, Boom. I mean, you know what Rob Zombie's music is all about, right? It's just goth stripper music to uh, like a, a B-horror film. That's really all that his music is and has been for a while. But that's what you love about Rob Zombie as well because he is one of those guys who you know that this is going to be a particular style of album. Almost kind of like that Catch-22 with ACDC, you know? You know what you're getting, but they should try to expand. But then once they expand, you want them to come back. But then... He does try something a little bit different on 18th century cannibals, excitable Morlocks and um, and other one way tickets on the ghost train because it sounds like a country song. And yeah, it's a country song, but it's Rob Zombie's country song. So it is kind of interesting. But then, like Zach alluded to, there's so many interludes. You don't need a 17 song album, 41 minutes that has half of the album as interludes. Just play the music. It would have been so much more enjoyable that way. And to be completely honest, what's wrong with throwing in another like another like uh, Hell Billy Deluxe style hit? Just do it. Bring yourself back. Because at this point, if he keeps going down the hole he's going down with these albums being mediocre, I can see, you know, Rob Zombie really kind of falling out of favor with a lot of metalheads. And time. Uh, what's your star ranking? We're going to give it a three star. Three like star. I said. It's been the most accessible that he's been. I feel like on some of the other albums that he's put out recently, the ones with the other two really long names that I'm not <laughs> going to say again, um, that he's really just trying to shock to shock. Like the big single off of the uh, – what the hell was the name of the – we're going to say The Electric Warlock. Mm -hmm. On that one, the big hit on there was supposed to be, well, everyone's fucking in a UFO. Come on. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're trying too hard at that point. You know, it's interesting. You All the songs that you named as, like, highlights, like the country-inspired ones, I actually didn't like. And not because it was country. To me, it felt like zombie trying too hard to be different. I don't think so. Because if zombie was trying too hard to be different, I will liken this to um, – and not many people know this – that Metallica, when they did a country song, that felt like they were trying too hard to be something completely different, just as shock value. This was Rob Zombie goes to the country and wants to make a country song, and that's what we got. I'm not saying it's the greatest Rob Zombie song, but I'm saying that it's a Rob Zombie country song that I can actually give some respect to because he didn't just – conform to trying to be country he mm. did his style of country which once again i may not ultimately enjoy it somebody may who's a huge rob zombie fan and good on them for liking it because it's him just being true to who he is with trying something very different and i could see that being in a b horror movie with a country style setting with you know, a guy with an overly large handlebar mustache with a girl all tied up, putting her on the train tracks. You know, yeah. that, that that style. I will say this. I, I know that my two and a half star ranking would make you think otherwise. I do agree that this is the most enjoyable Rob Zombie album in a long time. 
I actually, maybe that doesn't mean much though, because I actually really enjoyed Hellbilly Deluxe 2, the sequel that came out in uh, 2010 ish. So maybe yeah. my opinion doesn't matter too much, but I actually still stand by that that album had some really good songs. It did. I'm not going to lie either. It did have its moments. I mean, when you title something Hellbilly Deluxe, and we're going off on a tangent here, yeah. but when you title something Hellbilly Deluxe, yeah. you're uh, really setting yourself up for either a major win or a major fail because, let's face it, that's the, that's the album that broke him yeah. into being a legitimate solo act. Nine and out of ten times, a sequel to an album never works out. Oh, absolutely. Never works Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't even tell you an example. I'm sure if I thought really hard. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Who cares what we think? Right? Just because you clicked on the episode that's called a review and you wanted to hear two people talk about the review, it doesn't matter. What matters is who gave the longest review in under two minutes. Yeah. 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 Do, See, do, I can't do, do it. Do, do. Yeah, yeah. You, if you practice, maybe you could. Anyway, Matt, Zach, what was my score? Your time came in at a balmy two minutes and twenty-one seconds. No. Well, guess Sorry. what, Matt? You think you did better? I think I stayed under two minutes and twenty-one seconds, but I went guess over two. What? Minutes. You definitely went over two minutes, and you did not stay under my wow. time either. You came in at two minutes and forty-two seconds. That's okay. So I can neither of us won. Time. Neither of us won. It's sad, but you know who did win? Rob Zombie because he's probably going to do decent album sales. Yeah. Probably. One thing I want to say before we we sign off um, that we didn't mention: this album was years in the works, and it was actually finished before the pandemic started, essentially. And they've been sitting on it for a while because they were hoping that maybe they can tour behind it. And the reason why I bring that up is because when we were talking about the Foo Fighters album, uh, Medicine at Midnight, we both were saying how it just sounded so stale. And for an album that was they sat on for a while, you can tell that like they hadn't touched it or really didn't put a lot of effort into this. If they had said, oh, we worked on this for a while, even during the pandemic, you can tell that a lot of work went into this album. Like you said, the album is really well produced. And Zeus, he's done a lot of awesome metal records. He produced this. So I think that just speaks volumes that this is an album that has pretty much been in the can now for well over a year. In fact, I think they finished it in 2019 even. And yet it still sounds fresh. I think that speaks volumes too. Yeah. Well, as fresh as a Rob Zombie album can sound. Because well, let's be real, Rob Zombie should not sound all that <laughs> clean and fresh. It's a zombie. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You, you said it all. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Do you agree, though? Do you think we're way off on our opinions on the Lunar Injection Kool-Aid Eclipse conspiracy? Did I just say that out loud so that I can beat Matt at actually being able to pronounce it correctly in my first try? Yeah, maybe I did. Did you have a favorite song off of it? Let us know on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Epic Footnote. And once again... Thank you so much to our sponsor, Lucky 13 Beard Co. Again, go to etsy.com slash shop slash Lucky 13 Beard Co. and use the code EFP10 to receive 10% off of your order. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you join us again soon. Yeah. Still sounds Hadfield. Hadfield.